Hi friends, it's Missy Shipman with Missy's Glad Heart Studio. I'm delighted to partner once again with the Baldwinsville Public Library to bring you a fun card making virtual class. This month, August 2024, is extra special because I'm offering for you a full paper pumpkin kit. This is the kind of kit that we use at our Let's Kit Together events on the second Friday of each month, although in August it's the third Friday this time, August 16th, and I'd love to see you there. Uh, and that's a special class where it's a $20 supply fee. You receive a, either the paper pumpkin or a kits collection box that has all the supplies you need to make many projects. It includes the stamp set, the ink spot, the block, as well as the consumable supplies. So a little taste test for you today, those of you who are taking part in our Zoom class and have picked up this box at the library with your suggested $5 donation, it's a special bargain for you this month. Now this kit was first released as a Valentine kit. If you're like me, you love year-round Valentines, anniversary cards, thinking of you, happy sunshine friendship cards. And so you'll be able to put these stamps and supplies to use, not just for Valentine's Day in February, but for love notes and friendship notes all year long. Now you'll have the clear block, the stamp set, photopolymer stamp set, and the ink spot. It's wrapped neatly for you. You're gonna open up your surprises and there will be a, a kit of supplies to make three each of three different designs. So before I open this up, let me just show you some of them that are completed. They come with these great envelopes that are pre-printed on the inside and using your stamp and ink, you can decorate the envelope flaps. And then there are three beautiful gold foil cards now I thought this, uh, with all the locks, these cards tied in nicely to the Paris Olympics, Paris, the city of love, and you must know the story about the locks, the bridges with all of the love locks on them. So I thought that would be kind of appropriate to do during the month of August while we're enjoying the Olympics over in Paris. And what's especially fun about these kits is you have the supplies and you have a direction sheet that gives you step-by-step -step color instructions, but, there, but you can use your own imagination and creativity to change the design as you like. What I often do is make one of the cards as suggested by the Stampin' Up! designers, and then I use the other pieces to mix and match with items from my stash or simply change up the layout from portrait to landscape, for example, or to add different layers. You can also use these supplies to make 3D or memory keeping items. But tonight we'll go ahead and walk through so we'll make one each of the cards as designed and then I can't wait to see what you create with the leftover pieces. So when you open up your box, you'll have that tissue paper and this paper uh, kit all packed in cellophane to keep it clean and organized as it's shipped to you. We're gonna just slice that so that we can open up the cellophane. Remove that and we'll have our beautiful coral baker's twine, our Dim Stampin' Dimensionals, and then the instruction sheet is here, along with nine beautiful envelopes. There they are. And then we've got a stack of wonderful pieces. So we have three cards bases that are designed to make this keyhole card. Put those up. I like to kind of separate my pieces. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt to find what we need. Then we have the three card bases with this beautiful gold foil trellis design. And here are some of our vellum pieces. Now, typically what I do is I punch out anything that's die cut and put them with the card design that we're working on. So since I have some samples already made, sometimes that helps me um, organize my, either I use the, the three across the front of the instruction sheet, or I, if I have samples, I'll place them out. So I can start to make the piles of the materials I'm going to use. There's the keyhole cards off screen a little bit. We have the, um, the card with the three locks and that's this really pretty petal pink with the square lattice design. And then we have this um, fresh freesia with the, um, also that pretty gold foiling. 
Now, I see that these vellum circles are used on this card with the locks, so I'm gonna put those in that pile. You can approach it many ways. You don't have to sort out all the pieces when you first open your kit, but I usually enjoy doing that and then um, seeing where what goes with what and how I might use the pieces alternatively too. Now, some people don't throw these away. They keep them as a stencil, um, or this little piece of vellum could be used um, punched or, or die cut or simply cut to make a, a, another shape of vellum. So if you have a little shoe box of scraps, this would be a great one to add to that. Now we have the locks and each page is going to make one set of the cards. So I can go ahead and punch out all of these pieces here uh, for, for each card, or I could leave <coughs> excuse me, leave a couple of them complete. It's really up to you. I'm going to go ahead and just take one apart right now. So I'll take the three locks from the front, the top, I mean, and I'm gonna get rid of those little uh, inside pieces, put them right in the pile here for the card I'm going to make. Okay, then I've got two keys. One key is with my Fresh Freesia card with the circle vellum. And another one is here with the keyhole card. I'll put that in that pile. And then the two locks also go on the Fresh Freesia card over here. Okay, now we have some labels. So I can do the same thing and punch out what I need for each card. Now, there typically are extra pieces in a paper pumpkin or kits collection kit, which is helpful. And it allows us to, if we have an oops or if we wanna save them for another project. So again, I'm going to just punch out one and put it in my pile that I need for each card and set the rest aside for right now. The last thing I'll need for the center card is one of these fresh free, or, um, Yes, Fresh Freesia rectangle shapes. And again, I did all three. I'm only just gonna need one tonight for our assembly. So I'll go back and pull out these extra pieces and let's take away some of our extra vellum as well. So each card pile now, I will have just the things that I need for it. One card base and then the elements that we are adding one card base we don't need all that extra vellum we just need one piece okay and for this card again we need one card base one circle of vellum and we don't need all these envelopes right now either we'll put those to the side all right so you can see now i've made um just as I'm getting started with my kit, I like to familiarize myself with all the pieces, uh, kind of start to separate them so that I can make, get warmed up with my creativity by create, by copying. Uh, we call it the case method, copy and share everything, where we take an, an idea that's presented and we simply use, follow those same steps. And because we have these nice instructions, it's very helpful and easy to recreate them. Now you'll notice in addition to the pieces that I've gathered here for each card, we also have some of the baker's twine. So let's go ahead and cut the pieces we need for each card for the baker's twine as well. Now what I'd love to hear from you when we have a chance to visit is how you like to approach a kit like this. Whether you um, say, okay, I'm gonna start with this card and you just go through the goodie box to find the pieces that you need for that card. Now, the way Stampin' Up! has our instruction sheet is there's one page that tells you just the things you need. It tells you what adhesives you'll use, what stamps you'll use, uh, your block and your ink pad, and then what consumable elements you'll use. Again, I tend to, if it has two designs, I usually make both, or if it has three, I make all three just to get playing with the supplies. So I know that I need to add some twine um, for each card and I can look, I'll start with uh, this card in the center, which is in the instructions is card number one. 
Now, as you're watching this with, with Julia, you can pause if it's helpful to gather your materials together. I'll trust that Julia will do that so that everybody can gather what they need. Uh, but if we start by putting this card together, uh, we will have used this little treasure map here to find the pieces that we need and, and have those ready. We have our little adhesive dots and we have our dimensionals. So we have the tools we need. We just need to add some twine. Now, in each direction area, it will tell you how long to cut the twine. In this case, it suggests 15 inches. And you'll notice there is a ruler right on your instruction sheet. So I can measure out 15 inches and cut with my paper snips so that I have my floss ready for that card as well. Okay, now let's fold this so it's a little more easy to manage and, and read. And we can simply follow the steps. Now, because the greetings, the stamp set has different choices, we can decide what greeting we want to have or we can make our own greeting. So these, this has to my Valentine, love is the key, you hold the key to my heart, and I love you. So you can choose which design you'd like to put. I'm going to make them tonight just the way they're designed so we can follow along together. So I'm going to make a to my Valentine card. But remember, Valentine's cards aren't just for Valentine's Day. You can share these love notes any time of the year. When we're working with photopolymer stamps, they don't have any cushion like the, the um, traditional rubber, red rubber stamps. And so we need to have some kind of cushion um, underneath our stamps so that there's a little give to them. And if you don't, if you have a piercing mat like we use at our Let's Kit together, you can use that or a mouse pad or a magazine, but you can also use this heavy chipboard that comes in your kit kind of as a, a, a soft base for your stamping. So I'm going to uh, peel off of the photopolymer, uh, peel, peel off of the uh, acetate sheet, the greeting to my Valentine. I'm just gonna place that onto the clear block. I can make sure it's straight. Sometimes I use grid paper to help me make sure things are lined up properly. And then I'm gonna take my ink spot. Now the ink spot, um, sometimes can be tricky to peel off the little um, wrapper here. So very carefully you can use your paper snips to cut along there or use your fingernail, but be very careful so you don't cut yourself. And then I sometimes peel the lid completely off rather than keep it as a, an attached piece. And then I'm free to ink my stamp from the top onto the stamp itself or I can place the ink upside, right side up and go ahead and push down to ink up my stamp. Now when photopolymer stamps are made in, in Utah, they're made right in Kanab in Southern Utah, um, they sometimes have a little bit of film on them when they're new. So what I like to do is ink it up well and then stamp it a few times on a scrap paper or on that, that cardboard and just kind of wiggle the stamp, smushing it up and down a little bit and back and forth to help any residue be removed. And what that does is it helps condition your stamp so that it will be a really clear impression. We'll take our label and I'm going to line up be my or to my Valentine right across that label and just go down and up, okay? There's your first label. I'm gonna put my, remember to put my ink um, cover on so that I don't make a mess with my things. I'll set that aside. And now I have my pieces ready to assemble. So again, I'm looking at my sample. What you can do too when you're working on your cards is refer to the sample that's the directions that are in your kit and it, it will, there aren't any words, but just with pictures, it will explain what to stamp. So we stamped the To My Valentine. The next stamping is to add these hearts to the corners of the rectangle. So I'm gonna place that on top of my stamping, I'm calling this my stamping mat. It's just, again, providing a little bit of cushion. And I'm gonna take the hearts. I'll take the Be My Valentine, To My Valentine and put it back 
Now you'll notice I'm not cleaning my stamps. That's not a very good habit to model for you. You can use a wet paper towel or a chamois or a uh, baby wipe to clean your stamp. And it is a good habit to clean them before you put them onto the um, back onto the acetate so that in case you wanna change your color in the future, you can. And also so it doesn't get on your finger so much. Although as you know, it's not a good day unless there's ink on your fingers. This is a new stamp set, so I'm gonna stamp it a few times, kind of j jiggle it a little bit, wipe it a little bit, re-ink, and then apply onto the paper. Now, after you've used your stamp set, you don't need to do that same conditioning each time. After you've inked it and rubbed it a little bit, it's going to be ready every time you use it. And there we are. So on my scrap paper, I'll just kind of, because I don't have my chamois right here, I'm just going to wipe and get the majority of the ink off, and uh, which is kind of a shortcut. You could try that too, or you could have your chamois handy or a wet paper towel. There, so looking at our instructions, we know now we did the greeting and the stamping on the corners. And now we're gonna use our adhesives to apply things together. These little small solid dots, that's where we use the um, little glue dots. And the larger um, hexagon shapes are the Stampin' Dimensionals. So it looks like we wanna turn over our purple piece our fresh freesia, and we're gonna use these little glue dots in the corners. Now, if you have a glue stick or a, a tape runner, like our Seal or Seal Plus, or if you have the Tombow multi-purpose glue that I love so much, that will work as well. Uh, these can be a little bit fussy, but what happens is they have a wax paper liner. We're just gonna remove that, and that will leave a little shiny sticker of glue here. And we'll do that for all four corners. Take off those little white liners. Oh, but I forgot my card base. It's always a good idea to get that ready. Score it, fold it on the score line so that it's nice and ready to, uh, to put your pieces on. We'll go ahead and add that. Looks like it's kind of centered in the page. We've got a little strip of vellum. And vellum is a translucent paper. So we don't want it will show adhesive behind it. So we want to be sure we just have um, a little bit of adhesive where it's going to be covered up. See how the label on the card is going to cover up um, actually most of the vellum, but there's a little hint of that texture there. And so if I put my adhesive in the middle, it won't show, and but it will still hold this in place. So remove those little white circles and put the vellum in place. Now, I'm using the same, I'm copying the pattern from the instructions, so I'm just looking at how things are placed. We have our 15 inches of baker's twine, and I'm going to um, make this one with the bunny ear bow. So what I do is I find the middle of my twine, I make a loop in one side, a loop in the other side, and I cross them over. This is the bunny loop bow. You can, however you would tie a bow, like you're tying your shoes, but we wanna make, um, pull it so we have long loops so that the long loops and the, the uh, strands that will show when after we put our label in place. Our directions suggest securing this with a little glue dot. And remember the dimensionals on top are going to help hold it in place as well. So I'm taking my little glue dot, removing the piece of white, placing it here. There we are. And then I'll take my beam to my Valentine and add some dimensionals to the back. And this suggests I put sort of two kind of in the middle here. What I'm gonna be doing is anchoring down that ribbon I also can put the dimensionals on the back of the locks. And there's plenty of dimensionals here. It's showing, suggesting two on each shape to hold them in place. And it looks like we put the heart one in the center where it stands up most. So we'll start by putting um, 
the lock on, let's see, over on the right side, or left side, sorry, and then the circle lock over on the right. Again, those it's nice that those little hearts are peeking through. And then we'll finish it with the one in the center, this heart-shaped lock to go like this. Now, lastly, we're simply going to add the banner and we'll position it so that it's on top of that vellum, on top of the twine, just kind of locking those things in place. And there we have this really elegant card ready for your Valentine. You don't have to wait till February to share it. Write a note about the Olympics. Maybe you have a favorite memory of watching the Olympics with someone special or you've been enjoying them these couple of weeks. And next, let's work on card number two, which has the fresh freesia base. We have our uh, circle vellum, our label for the sentiment, uh, two locks and a key. So this one, we always wanna start, we're going to uh, fold our card base and set that aside so that's ready. In this case, we're gonna stamp directly onto the card base. Right here, you'll see some hearts added and then also stamp our greeting. So look at my stamp set, pull out those hearts. Let's see, is this, nope. Oh, I have two stamp sets. I have one that's brand new and one that I've been enjoying. Let me use this one here. We'll go ahead and stamp some hearts in different places here. You'll see on my the sample that I uh, first showed, I didn't do this step. Uh, you don't have to, but it does add some cool texture. It makes it look like the hearts are behind the gold. Oh, I guess I did. You just can't see them too well behind the vellum. I think I tried to make these a little higher so that they might show hanging out a little bit more. It's up to you if you want more hearts to show, stamp up a little higher because it's true. It's a, they're kind of secret little um, hiding there a little bit, peekaboo, but that's okay. The other stamping we're going to do is our greeting, our sentiment, which says, love is the key. I'll put my hearts back here and find that greeting, love is the key. Okay. Remember, if it's your first time using it, you're going to ink it up, stamp it a few times, stretch it around. That's going to make it condition your stamp so that it's ready to fully ink. Make sure you're, you have some kind of padding under you, either the cardboard stamp mat or a magazine. Love is the key. There we are. So now we'll, we'll assemble. We're gonna put some adhesive on the back of the vellum. Remember I mentioned that we don't, that adhesive will show through the vellum. So they suggest you just have a couple of dots on the vellum where these locks are gonna be. So you can use the, the guide here to place a few dots. And again, if you have a preferred adhesive, feel free to substitute something for these little dots if you'd prefer a different adhesive. But you wanna just push those down where the adhesive is to lock it there. Then we'll put some dimensionals on the back of our die cut elements. We have two locks and our sentiment. I really enjoy working with the kits because all of the supplies that I need are included right in the box, except maybe scissors. You sometimes need some paper snips for trimming things. Uh, and then you may have an adhesive that you prefer to substitute. But otherwise, everything you need is right inside the box and it's just really fun to uh, follow along the instructions uh, if you like doing it that way to, um, to recreate the projects or be inspired by the design and create your own, um, use your imagination to make your own design. So I mentioned before, this card could be a landscape instead of a portrait. There's lots of different ways you could change it around. This piece of ribbon is shorter. We just need six inches of ribbon. So we'll go back to our ruler and measure six inches of our twine. Here we are. We'll make a little bow. 
This time I'm going to do it like I tie my shoes. So I make the first loop, wrap around, and pull that piece through the hole. Make a tiny little bow. Now this bow we're gonna anchor with a little bit of the glue dot. There we are. Let's also add our glue dots to the back of the key and then we'll put them in position on the card. Adding the key to the locks and the little bow with the glue dot right in the center so that it looks like it's tied onto the key and holding the key toward the locks. Love is the key. Now let me not forget to share with you how you can embellish the envelope for these cards. So. Uh, sometimes I put something on the flap of the envelope. My friend Linda, Linda Talbot always used to say we were flappers and we would make sure to add something to the flap of the card. Sometimes I also put something on the front, usually in the left bottom corner. But let me show you today how I would can embellish something on the back of the envelope. So we'll take our Fresh Freesia ink spot and our stamp and this is a really pretty embellished keyhole for a door, perhaps. Place it like that. It's got a fun um, filigree pattern. And then this little keyhole inside. So I'm gonna put that on the other side of my block, just tap it in and put it inside. So if I'm working with different stamp sides of the stamp, then I want to um, make sure I don't pick up a lot of extra ink around the block that I can smush onto the envelope. I'm careful just to um, work with, it's usually better just to work with one stamp at a time, but when something's so tiny like that, sometimes I'll put it in the corner on one and the corner on the other. Okay, so that's our second card. Now we'll move to our third card, which we'll go flip our directions. This is the fun one with the open keyhole. And this has a lot of possibilities. I've seen some great alternative cards that use this punch out piece, this negative piece as a flower pot. So you could sort of cut this base, a little piece off the bottom, and now you have a flower pot that you could fill with cut out, punched out flowers from magazines or, or that you stamp from other stamps, um, stamp sets. So it's fun, you've got all, when you work with the kit, you have the leftover pieces to kind of play and use your creativity with other supplies you have at home. Uh, tonight we'll go ahead and make card three just as designed following the instructions. So we have our folded card base and in this one, we just need to stamp our sentiment. The sentiment here says, you hold the key to my heart. And I'll put that onto the block. And I mean, this little guy that I used for the envelope, let me go ahead and show you a good habit of putting them back. You'll clean them before you put them on, but go ahead and put them on your sheet, acrylic sheet, so you can keep track of them. Now we've got this one, you hold the key to my heart. I'm going to make sure if you haven't yet um, conditioned the stamp by wiggling it a few extra times, do that. And then you'll down and up onto the sentiment strip. I love how this is printed so that it looks like there's another mango color behind the pink. It kind of gives it some more dimension. And let's see, that's the only stamping we need to do. And on the back of the vellum, we'll put a few glue dots. I've got all these little staticky little pieces of dimensional backings. I'm gonna go ahead and add two glue dots to the back, kind of in the middle where it's gonna be covered up by the label and then dimensionals on the label. I love that uh, the majority of our kit collections include the dimensionals right in the kit uh, because that's such fun uh, way to embellish and add texture to your projects that dimension with these pop-up stickers. There, that one's easy, isn't it? Now we're simply gonna add the key to the center by putting on some of those glue dots. Here they are. And then I'm gonna cut one more piece of string for us. Let's see, and I can look at my cheat sheet directions here to see what, uh, how much, how many inches they suggest for my bows. 
I've got my key. I'm going to get that positioned right away in the center here. And the directions tell me to cut six inches. So that's the same uh, shape of size of bow that we cut for the last one. I can use the ruler on my instruction sheet. Tie my little bow. We have other videos that show how to make the fork bows. Those are fun. Uh, but I'm going to tonight just use my supplies from my kit. So I'm, although you could grab a fork from your kitchen and uh, catch, look up the videos on how to make fork bows. Uh, I also have some new hair picks that next time I can, next time I share a bow, I can show you how to create it with a hair pick. Take off that glue dot and put the bow in the center. That one's a very quick one. But again, it's an engaging card where we have a different kind of opening here. So I encourage you though, to save your extra pieces, make a vase or other, you know, sometimes we need to just change our perspective and look at items um, upside down or right side around <laughs> uh, to get a different look. So don't forget to embellish your envelopes. You'll have the nine beautiful envelopes. And as you're working, uh, decide if you want to make, go ahead and make all three of these cards, each version three times the same, or stretch your, your supplies. Uh, sometimes what people do is they cut the card base in half so that they have another beautiful colored cardstock piece to work with, and they would mount this on a different piece. That's one idea. Uh, the back of these are nice, solid colors that would work with that white reverse uh, for different projects. Uh, you can substitute different sentiments that you have or your own handwriting so that you can personalize your cards however you like. I do hope you'll put these supplies to good use with lots more projects so you can keep your stamp set together with your block and your ink spot. Um, you'll have leftover adhesives, leftover twine uh, to, to use as well. And then all of those goodie parts to, to make either six more cards that look this similar or the same or um, combined with your own different supplies. Again, I'd love to welcome you to our Kits Let's Kit Together classes, which are generally on the second Friday of each month. But this month, August 2024, I'd love to welcome you on August 16th for our Let's Kit Together. And I have a number of choices, a lot of variety in the kits that you can choose, um, but always it includes the supplies that you need to make multiple projects. And if it's a stamping kit, it includes the stamp set in the block and the ink. If it's a crafting kit where supplies are already pre-printed, then you don't need to have uh, those supplies, but everything is available at the class. If you have any questions, please reach out to me or to Julia. Julia, thank you again for your patience and your um, and encouragement as we partner together to bring our classes to the library. I wish you a happy birthday, Julia. August is your birthday month. And I look forward to seeing people in person August 16th at 10 a.m. at the library. Thank you, friends. Have a good day.